Today's episode of Film Rights brought to you by Full Sail University. Today on Film Right, we talk about photography with my good friend, Chris Martin. Welcome to Film Right, the show that takes the mystery out of the effects and techniques going to some of your favorite Hollywood films. I'm your host. Ryan Conley, and today we're not actually talking about filmmaking, we're talking about photography. And the reason that I'm doing this is because a lot of people have been asking me about cinematography, and I'm going to be getting into that uh, on the show pretty soon, and I thought the best place to start would be with photography, because that's just a stripped down version of cinematography. You're just dealing with one frame instead of 24 per second. So if you want to be a cinematographer, you really should start with photography, since you could just focus on one frame uh, with just one subject and really nail that down, and that'll help you tremendously when it comes to the live action stuff. So to do that, I called in my good friend Chris Martin, who is a pro photographer, to help us out, and he's going to do two basic setups to get you guys started. So Chris, take it away! Like in the big shows, when they're like, take it away! Logo. So uh, today, we are going to be just basically taking a basic headshot of Josh over here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use one light. Um, I typically, for headshots, like using one light. You can do multiple light setups, but there's a, a large difference between videography and photography, whereas videography, you use constant lighting because you're taking constant frames and, and doing video. With photography, you use a light that, as you can see right here, is not constant. It's not on right now. and I have a little transmitter and receiver from the camera to the light, so it goes off when the shutter opens and closes. This is the Alien B unit, whereas some more expensive lighting gear, you would have to have a power pack as well as the light head. This is all one unit, one complete unit. So for around anywhere from $250 to $400, depending on the output of power that you're getting for the light, you get a great little unit that takes a beating and you can bring outside, you can bring inside, it's a great thing. I did have a 24 to 70 on there. Uh, and it's a great lens, I love it. It's at uh, 2.8 aperture, which is a pretty fast lens, but I want to switch it out for an 85. So an 85 millimeter lens is typically better for portraits because it compresses the frame a little bit more than a wide lens. Uh, a wide angle lens will give distortion in the face and make a face look a little bit wider, uh, whereas an 85 compresses everything down a little bit, gives more of a narrow feel to the face, and makes your subject look better. All right, so right now I am taking a shot using just natural light, just the available light that we have in the room which is actually a source from this window. And the picture that you see, it doesn't really have that much depth, but we do have a little bit of separation from this side of his face to that. We've got some shadow here, some highlight there, which is great, but we're gonna bump that up a little bit, give it some more sex appeal. We're just popping the transmitter back on right now to make the signal go from the camera to the light, telling the light to go off um, so that we can add our light in and make this shot look great. And as you can see, we now have an image that has a little bit more depth to it than the previous. So now that we have the basics uh, of the lighting setups and all that, I'm gonna actually try to take the best portrait that I can of Josh right now with what we've got. Um, and I've decided that I actually wanna shoot from a higher angle, so I'm gonna have Josh sit down in the chair. The thing is, when you uh, actually when you shoot from a higher angle and look down on your subject, for doing headshots at least, it, you, you get more definition in the chin. Um, I'm gonna have you shift your, your chin around a little bit so that we can get the best possible portrait of you. Um, but if you're shooting from high, let's say, like if I'm, or shooting from low, like if I'm down here shooting up at you, it's gonna make you look like not only kind of like a, little, a big giant, you're gonna look all tall and stuff, but it also gets kind of awkward angle on the chin and stuff. So we're gonna get you the best looking photo that we can while reducing any kind of little things down here that you don't wanna necessarily have. And then what I want you to do is kind of just bring, uh, you're not gonna bring your, really your chin forward, but I want you to bring, think about bringing your ears a little bit forward. So just extend your neck out a little bit. That looks great, bring your chin up a little bit. Perfect. All right, so I like the shot a lot, but I do want to darken the background up a little bit. So something that plays into that is something called inverse square law, which is the amount that a light will fall off in a specific distance. Um, so if I'm trying to darken this background up, then um, I'm going to shoot at a higher shutter speed, which right now I'm at a 200th. I'm going to bring it up to a like 250th, which is actually my cutoff. Uh, and we're going to move Josh and the light source. We're going to keep those relative. So Josh and the light source will be the exact same distance from each other that they are right now but we're gonna move them away from the wall so that the amount of light uh, hitting the background actually falls off and is a bit darker, so we have a little bit more of a dramatic effect. So we just moved Josh back off the wall quite a bit uh, so that we can darken the background. We also added a diffusion panel to cover any of the ambient light coming through the window. Um, so now we're gonna do the shot and see what One, happens. One, two, three. Perfect. 
we get a picture that has great separation with the background. We've got a great catch light in his eyes, so it gives him some life. So now that we've run through a super basic portrait setup, uh, we're gonna move things outside and show you how to utilize one light as well as a mixture of sunlight uh, to be able to get a great portrait. I'm always excited when I get to promote my alma mater to you guys. I went to Full Sail and I absolutely loved it. So if you dream of becoming a filmmaker too, Full Sail University has degree programs to help you achieve that goal, including on-campus film bachelor degree program and the online digital cinematography bachelor's program. Through the film bachelor's degree program, you'll learn the filmmaking process from start to finish on a campus that's equipped like a Hollywood studio backlot. It's really freaking impressive. Full Sail University also offers a variety of campus and online degrees and fields related to the entertainment and media industry, including video games, art and design, recording arts, entertainment, business, and many more. So visit fullsale.edu forward slash film to learn more. Logo. If you don't have access to a full-fledged studio or you don't know where to shoot, look outside somewhere around your house because I'm sure there's a place that you will find that can be beautiful or disgusting, whatever you want. If you want a crazy urban feel, you can probably hang out and go to some area that has lots of buildings and all that. Or you can go to a wetland preserve, which is where we are right now, and we're gonna show you how to incorporate a light outside and make this scene a little more epic. Let's, let's epicize it. So I'm gonna take a little picture here. So as you can see, his face is properly exposed, but the background is super bright, it's really blown out, and what we can do is we can actually add a light in to be our key source of light while using the sun as a backlight, as a rim light, and then actually make the sky look quite a bit darker. So I'm switching over to uh, my 18 to 55. It's actually a kit lens, and it's not that bad of a lens. It actually is a very, it's a wide enough angle to get the shot that I want right here. Um, and it is pretty inexpensive. I'm also gonna pop an ND filter on just to block out some of that sun and be able to stop down to 3.5 with using full power on my light. One, two, three. Uh, you can see that we've actually dramatically changed the photo. The sun is creating a nice backlight around his shoulder, which is separating it from the background. Um, and he's got dramatic lighting on him because of the use of this light, instead of just having the natural light effect. All right, so there we go. We took this shot and changed it into this shot without any editing whatsoever, just by adding in one simple light source and utilizing the sun as a backlight to light the back of Josh and give some ambient light to the scene. Uh, basically, we exposed for sky and then added in a fill flash to be able to light him properly and get the right exposure, the right skin tone, and make him look like one handsome dude. Get out of here. Ah, okay, see ya. Logo. So that's it. A big thank you to Chris for coming out and helping us out. Of course, there's a ridiculous more we could get into as far as photography goes, but this was just the basics to get you started on inside and outside uh, shooting and some things to get your mind a chewing on. So thank you very much to Chris for coming out and helping us out with this episode. If you want to follow him on Twitter, you can do so and you should do so here. You could also check out his website here if you want to hire him for some photographying he does celebrity photography band photography pretty much anything under the sun check out his work he's absolutely fantastic and he travels anywhere so if you're looking for someone to rock your socks off photography wise it's chris he plays the camera like a fiddle or maybe an electric guitar because i said rock and fiddles don't really rock unless you're the fiddler on the roof that makes sense who set the roof on fire? No, that's not it. I think I just did who did the dog. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go. Yeah. Have you played Nyan Cat? Josh. Played what? Have you played Nyan Cat? Nyan Cat? Nyan Cat. No. Oh, it's the bomb, bro. Really? Oh, I love it. Greatest music ever. Oh, I'm gonna die. I'm dead.